Good morning. My name is Pierre Claudel. I am a power system engineer at Schneider Electric France, and I am really happy to take part of the ETAP Digital Innovations Day. And today I'm going to present you a case of an AC arc flash calculation that we generally provide to our customer. So in that particular case, it is with a, a data center. Um, this arc flash study has been requested by one major electrical facility manager in Europe for a data center located in Italy. And about the customer needs, um, it consists in the identification of the correct R flash PPE to be used during maintenance task uh, by the uh, uh, by the by the maintenance staff. Um, to address the customer need, it is important to precise what can be the added value in such electrical study, and for that, I would make a distinction between between R flash incident energy calculation and R flash hazard analysis, uh, which goes beyond. And as we will see uh, together later on, in Europe, customers are not yet so familiar with our flash hazards calculation because first, our local labor regulations um, are more oriented uh, towards electrical shock. That does not mean that our flash is completely disregarded, but it's not treated as uh, uh, rigorously as in the NFPA 70. And second, our flash prevention introduced by the NFPA 70E is often a source of fear when we announce figures in calories per centimeter square, even if customers have been executing maintenance tax for many years. So that's why it is of high importance at the moment of delivering an arc flash study to focus more on the risk on the likelihood of occurrence more than the simple delivery of energy tables into a report or uh, energies and R flash labels. So in the case uh, I am describing now, uh, that data center is composed of four main sections. Each section is supplied by a main 15 kV switch gear, uh, which supply a LV switchboard through a step down transformer. Uh, we have here one essential LV generators connected to each LV section. And we have also inside the architecture some uh, UPS, so which will uh, determine some uh, particular uh, operating configurations, operating modes. About the software, so this study have been uh, used with version 20.6 and uh, above these standards, uh, we uh, base ourselves on the last version of the NFPA 20. e About the application guide IEEE 1584 2018, that last version of application guide is uh, really uh, a must in the way as it gives more accurate values uh, in terms of incident energy, so it allows an incident energy optimization for some cases. And furthermore, it allows to customize uh, by considering the true dimensions of the equipment and of the compartment. So that's a really good asset uh, in terms of uh, technical quality of the report. About the short circuit calculation uh, that we'll be based on, um, we will base ourselves on the IEC 6909, last version of 2016, for, because it is a common uh, standard. And especially, we, we base ourselves on the standard because our flash calculation is generally a sequence of short circuit calculation, selectivity study, and our flash calculation. So customer needs to refer to that IC16909 short circuit calculation for the bolted fault. So based on the 6909 um, standard, instruction for min and max calculation are to consider a C factor depending on min or max values, to consider a configuration leading to the minimum short circuit or maximum short circuit values, this is highly important to highlight. It is important to proceed to 
both maximum short circuit current calculation and minimum because it is not only on minimum short circuit current that you will get the uh, highest values. You can get high values on minimum short circuit current because the tubing time is much higher. So as per the standard, uh, we need to apply some impedance correction factor to, uh, re to consider or not motor's contribution and to consider some resistance adjustment for the connections. So by computing this, we allow, thanks to ETAP, to uh, retain only one single calculation, which will be the worst case calculation. Some additional considerations. So in that case, as I was explaining, we base ourselves on the true drawings on the dimension of each equipment switchboard, switchgear panel boots. Um, we base ourselves also on to the electrode configurations based on the last version of IEEE 1584. Uh, so depending on the approach, depending on the evaluation of the engineer responsible for the calculation, we can consider such or such electrode configurations. And in that particular case here, uh, given the application, um, small motors, and because of the small size of them, have been disregarded in, that, in the study. Uh, so just to give you an example of the kind of reflection we have to uh, to to uh, to go in, and uh, the kind of details we got we we got to uh, to to work. Uh, here are two examples of drawings of LV equipment where we provide uh, an R flash calculation. In that case, for each compartment from the incomer uh, uh, main protective device. Uh, on the left to the uh, feeder or bus bar compartments. So uh, this needs, this requires uh, a, a job of documentation prior computing the, the values, and this needs to uh, inform many fields in, inside each uh, bus of uh, ETAP software. Just a reminder that uh, regarding IEC 6909, so uh, we will base ourselves on the initial symmetrical value on both minimum and maximum configurations. Uh, the tripping times are set to a maximum of two seconds, okay, as per recommendation of the NFPA. And we generally um, follows the recommendation in terms of working distance and burst gap. Uh, that means uh, regarding the equipment, we uh, based on self actually on the values um, 91 for uh, 15 kV and uh, 61 and 46 for LV equipment. By the end, the R flash incident energy calculation is this. It's a complete table uh, containing uh, by bus, the R flash incident energies at the right uh, of the column here, and also the R flash boundaries. Uh, the rest of the values are for, let's say, for verification uh, to be sure to have uh, understandable results. Uh, but let's say the two main figures which are of importance for the customer knowledge is the R flash incident energies and R flash. Uh, boundaries. Uh, here in that particular case, we identified two uh, uh, working places where we exceed a value of 40 calories per centimeter square, which are the bus of TGG and uh, the bus of the main low voltage switchboard uh, BQ, where we exceed uh, a value higher than 100, sorry, 100 calories per centimeter square. So uh, that's why we can say here, OK, uh, mitigation uh, possibly required. And that is the beginning of the second step of the analysis where we need to enter into not the arc flash calculation, which is done, but the hazard analysis, evaluation of the risk. So now this is said. Um, what about the uh, working place where we have values higher than 40? One approach can be the one recommended by the NFPA to, uh, let's say, simply state that any work involving R flash hazard as a location 
should be prohibited. Another possible approach can be to work next to the customer to uh, engage a discussion with him by entering into the details of the safety procedures and why not uh, modifying them by, for example, considering considering additional operation for, um, for example, uh, additional disconnection that can be done, which contributes to drastically reduce the risk. Uh, for uh, example, um, to provide a disconnection at the um, uh, pr uh, primary side of the transformer before proceeding to the withdrawing of the main LV circuit breakers, this kind of, uh, this kind of considerations. Then a second way is the R flash mitigation itself. About this high value, why not trying to reduce them? So if we think about um, uh, considering a way uh, with the existing equipment in place, uh, we can think about adopting uh, the right protection settings, allowing not only to ensure protection, not only to ensure selectivity, but also and as far as possible to allow an acceptable reduction of arc flash incident energy. In each of our study, this is the way we proceed. And as selectivity goes on the contrary side uh, of on, on the contrary of the R flash reduction, uh, the solution is not always so simple. Um, another approach can be to increase the working distance. Uh, to in that case, uh, it is it has been another alternative proposed to the customer by um, proposing uh, one meter working distance, considering that there's enough room in front of the equipment to handle the uh, the uh, voltage absence test uh, stick, for example. So uh, the question of uh, of space and the question of working distance can be a really good way of uh, trying to get out from some situation where uh, the air flash reduction is 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 complicated. Another approach can be to go with the customer uh, into a, a really intimate con discussion with him about considering additional equipment. For example, in that way, in that particular cases, uh, a discussion about uh, an additional module inside the tripping unit of the main LV circuit breakers, allowing to provide what we call ERMS, an energy reducing maintenance switch ensuring that at the moment of the maintenance of the presence of the operator in front of the uh, uh, possible live conductor, that all the magnetic will be set at a minimum. In that philosophy, we can also provide solution by um, uh, applying uh, a new set of protection from set A to set B uh, and by activating them uh, remotely, uh, so that can be uh, easily done um, in the protection relay, but this needs to be uh, prepared and, uh, and planned, um, let's say, at the design step. And then uh, we can also embed inside our equipment uh, an arc flash detector like the VAMP relay using the light information to uh, provide a faster um, uh, response of the protection. In a conclusion, if our flash incident energy calculation is more widespread habit within our customers, we can still observe that it still requires explanation, a full explanation. As already mentioned in Europe, customers are not yet so familiar with our flash hazard because first, our local regulation do not deal so strictly, uh, as strictly as NFPA. Uh, and we are more uh, uh, focused on uh, electrical shocks. That doesn't mean that arc flash is disregarded. No, I'm not saying this at all. And second, arc flash prevention introduced by the NFPA is often 
um, a source of fear when we communicate values of incident energy. So that's why it is of high importance at the moment of delivering an arc flash study to focus more on the risk, on the likelihood of arc winds, more than simple delivery of energies and after labels. Okay. So for uh, that objective, the knowledge of equipment of the inner structure of each equipment switch gear switchboard is really good asset. Uh, also, the knowledge of the maintenance operation procedures is really fundamental to better assess the likelihood of occurrence. And that will be the guarantee of an accurate result, uh, but also that will be the guarantee of pragmatic approach of the arc flash. Uh, uh, we are not here to provide a mere study, but we are here to identify the true situation of our flash risk. And, uh, and then I should say that the pragmatic side is really uh, what drives our study. It is really important not to have a too rigorous interpretation of the NFPA. This too rigorous interpretation can lead to uh, some uh, uh, difficulty to understand our flash issues. We have some challenges different in greenfield and broadfield where challenges are different, but in both cases, expectation from the customer only one, it is to provide a practical figures and practical way of driving uh, the new safety procedures. I thank you very much for your attention.